all right so welcome back welcome back to this channel so yeah over the last few videos we have uh learned about the you know, deep learning in a lot of research papers uh right we have a lot read a lot of research papers and in this video as we have seen in the thumbnail and the uh like the title we are going to learn about we are going to not learn but we are just going to know about the history of AI, like the first research paper in this field of artificial intelligence. Like how did this idea actually propagate? How did this idea actually create get got created? What uh, are the things you know that were in the people's minds uh, back in nineteen fifties? So that is like way past, uh, like in nineteen fifty. So uh, and we're also going to learn about a man. Uh, He's a, his name is Alan Turing. Uh, he's a great man. I'll briefly also talk about him too on what he have done. And this is the paper uh, that he have, you know, that led to the uh, start of the change. And I think he also, he's introduced, he introduced a test, right? He, inter he introduced a test called the Turing test, right? And this test is actually used to evaluate how, uh, if the machine, if the machine is actually intelligent or not, right? So we'll be covering that too. So this is the paper, right? Uh, mind a quarterly review of psychology and philosophy. So we'll be taking a more philosophical and psychological approach rather than mathematical one, because uh, again this is a very old paper, probably the first paper in the field of artificial intelligence, right? So we're going to discuss that. Road by Alan Turing. Right, computing machinery and intelligence. So that is a paper. So first, who is Alan Turing? Well, he was a British um, mathematician. Right, he was uh, like a child prodigy. You know, I think have he had solved many puzzles and problems at a very young age. And then as he grew older, right, as he grew older, he you know, World War Two started. At that time, World War Two was uh, the like the war was going on. At that time he got selected into the army so what happened is the germans right the germans uh, wanted to send messages to the soldiers so the soldiers were actually in different parts of america let's say or even british right and then they the germans used a so the the, the germans wanted to in encrypt the messages so they want to send encrypted messages secret messages to other people and then just to pass over information right so they want to pass information over to different people, uh, so let's say in British, right? So, yeah, so they used a machine, right? The Germans used a machine called Enigma. It, it, it was a um, it was a machine in which there were like many uh, motors, right? And they and they had many like and these motors would like rotate in certain um uh, like speeds, and then uh they. I think they have built they have built this kind of system with many rod many, many motors and many rotors, and they have to set a setting, and so and there will be like many settings, right? So they should set one setting. If if they set one setting, then the motors are going to rotate in specific speeds, and and thus the encryption will be different. So for each setting, for each setting, new encryption message or a new message will be translated, right? So there will be like for like. For let's say uh, I have the word hello, right? Uh, for example, in the day one, when with a specific setting, uh, the translation would be something different, and then the, in the day two, when the setting is actually changed, the uh, encryption code is also will be changed. So that the idea is, so that is the idea. They will just use this machine and then uh, use a particular setting. So they'll change the setting every single day. Each day will have separate setting, right? And then, uh, like, they will use a setting, and then based on that, they will be uh, able to decrypt uh, a any message. Right? And then the hard thing is, right? The bad thing is there are many more pos. There are like many millions of possible settings. I think there are like uh, millions, 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 three times, right? Three times of millions or million cube. Right. So there are million cube possible settings and each setting will be changed so the setting will be changed every day so there are like many possibilities so 
within uh, 24 hours they have to change like many settings they have, they have to look upon many settings so there, are, so there are many possibilities in the settings and then the british's plan is to actually break the enigma enigma code so that they could understand what the germans are talking to each other right so that is the idea uh, so again i'll repeat the enigma it's a machine with like different motors and rotors that are rotated and then uh, each letter will be re decrypted into another letter <laughs> right uh, and then every day setting is changed and there are like millions of millions of possible settings and they have to set the settings to actually get the translation of that en en encryption right so that is the idea so what uh, these people did is they have found one uh, flaw with this enigma for example if the letter a is encrypted then uh, a new letter will be generated right through the enigma a new letter will be generated let's say b c or something but when when you input the letter a then you can be sure that a will not be generated so again you will not get the value a again so that is one flaw that the uh, i think the team the alan turing team found in the enigma and then also at the ending of every uh, like note uh, or, or every letter so these letters will be passed through like airplanes or something right sorry so these these letters will be passed through airplanes or any transport facilities so uh, there will be like uh, all the words so uh, the ending of the letter so the in that in, in a particular page let's say the ending will be hail hitler because uh, that is the like i think the salutation the hail hitler will be the ending uh, words the last two words so uh, you know you, right so that is another flaw that people uh, this uh, scientists have found so alan turing has built a system i think called bomb in which he has uh, built like a uh, like a mechanical machine just almost almost like computer that just tries all of these combinations and checks if the final word is hail hitler and based on that uh, it only looks at like good possibilities and and because we have also found this flaw in the machine that uh, the you know the input will not be generated as in their enigma they have uh, figured uh, to found they have figured the enigma code and you know they have built this machine in which they could break the code uh, like every single day and they can improve improve, improve upon it so that is the enigma code i'll just open the paper again right so this is the paper so and then after that after that uh uh, that in like the discovery of uh, or the breaking of enigma code after the british scientists have break they broke the enigma code you know the war ended very fastly and after that alan turing in 1950 wrote this paper on com computing machinery and intelligence so that is a paper that we'll be discussing and it provided the basic idea of machine learning what ai actually is and it actually helped uh, i think the modern AI developments to, uh, you know, reach the heights that they have, they are uh, currently at. So I think uh, it's a very good paper, but a very pretty lengthy one. So you know, if you you know wish to read everything, I'll definitely recommend you to. But now I'll just cover the main parts that are you know that are really important for us that are, you know. That are that are followed the the raw laws that are followed in the current uh, situation. So the idea is he has built a test and then he called it the imitation game. So there is actually, I think, uh, I think a movie called Imitation Game uh, about the life of Alan Turing, right? So that uh, he, he has developed a game called the imitation game in which there are two persons. For example, there is a man and a woman. So that, that is the example that is posted, uh, that is used in this paper. So there is a man and a woman. The man... Uh, and then you know there will be an inter interrogator, a detective, and then the man and woman has to write write letters to this interrogator to make them believe, to, or to make the interrogator believe that they are women. So he doesn't know which of them is a woman, 
so be, like it will be like letters and then that is the game that he has introduced and then we uh, let's say the man will try to be try to answer the questions of the inter interrogator to make him believe that he is the woman and that is a game and we could use it to uh, machines in which you know there will be like a machine and a com machine and a human right and then the interrogator will ask questions to both machine and humans and the machine has to make the interrogator believe that it is a human right so that is the idea that is simple that like uh, it it might look pretty simple this conclusion but i think it is a very hard one to make it's a very bold one to make you know uh, you know that that is a game he um, he has built in which the computer will try to make you fool that you are uh, that it is the human so, and that is intelligence so he actually changed the way we think of intelligence what is what thinking means he changed the way he changed the meaning of thinking what is actually thinking we could actually we can't actually de define thinking but we could express it in a rel in relative terms that right? we are humans and and uh, he has you know used this term like humans can are able to think so then if humans are able to think then we could make if we could make machines like humans then the machines could think so that is the basic idea so we just want machines to um mock humans right or do copy humans right just to live life life or live life like humans so that is the idea and i think you know you, you might say that you know it's not a very hard you know even i could do that even i could make that conclusion well you're not you're wrong right he's a very smart man because in that age even computers were not that good right even like i just i think just calculators were built and just mechanical uh, things were built and all that and even in 1950 to make these conclusions that are actually followed now i think it's like like it's it's very smart very intelligent and it's a very bold uh i think addition or conclusion that has achieved to saying that uh imitating humans is the way, only way we could um make or imitating humans is the only way we could um measure the intelligence of anything so how well can it imitate humans and this is the only thing that I have uh, has that he has shared, and we could actually have an interrog interrogator and talk with something and uh, and you know like figure and, and make the human figure out or the interrogator figure out whether it is a, whether it is human or not. And then if you look at Chat GPT, I think we have I think we have break the Turing test. Uh, I think pretty uh, early also, but if you look at Chat GPT, well we have all already. Bro broke the Turing test, and if you talk to Chat GPT, you'll almost think that you are you are talking to a uh, actual human. So that is, I think, Turing the Turing test problem is already solved. And then uh, to actually lay lay these foundations that are actually used in twenty twenty three in nineteen back in nineteen fifties is actually pretty. It's a pretty, uh, a, a a pretty good prediction. Right, you know, based on this, on these things, everything has been built, and then he actually shares a bit about computers, I believe, uh, the digital machines, and what computers can can be able to do. Right, and then he also shares some con contrary views. You know, what can be the contradictions that can be made on his argument? He's a very good, uh, responsible man. He also looked at con con like contraries, right? Contrary views, and tries uh, he tries to solve them. So he says. So one contradiction might be that uh, the the machine can might just you know remember or by heart the or just memorize the answers. So the machine might have just memorized the answers over having a lot of conversations, right? While training the data after training the data model in our language, uh, you know, training was not a thing in the in in like nineteen fifties. But after the machine has like talked to many people, it might memorize the answers. It might memorize the answers and just remember them and just put it them, put it out. You know that might be a you know a possible output of the machine. So that is that can be a contradiction. But Alan Turing told that you know there are many possible conversations that you can uh, that we can go through and just. Like getting each getting the same response every time is not uh, a clear 
you know it, it's not a very clear uh, representation of intelligence so that is also a uh, thing against this contradiction and the interrogator might, might ask can ask could ask tricky questions that have never asked before because there are many possible questions that can be asked and so that is uh, another i think i think something it told against this contradiction and then uh, i'll just read it tells uh, It's the thing. Uh, that is the thing, and then he's uh, you know there is also a mathematical, I think, contradiction that says that we could not represent intelligence in the form of, uh, like mathematical equations, right? Because you know if you think about it, machines are essentially solving mathematical problems. Even like deep learning in this current age also, if you think about it, if you go through the, uh, the scratch, essentially deep learning is actually a optimizer optimizer algorithm which is completely mathematical functions a group of mathematical functions but are, but have but have done a very large scale so you might say that or some the contradictors might say that we could not represent intelligence in mathematical equations well well alan turing answered that by saying that you know uh, if you think about it even though we could not represent uh, intelligence well we could make the machines we could make the machines exhibit with intelligence or just act like they are intelligent and that is the thing that they have uh he has shared or i think you know even humans right even we humans we just say we the other people can know that i am intelligence by only the things that i exhibit and that is what alan turing stresses in this conversation by saying that we humans are like um we exhibit intelligence and you know we could just make machines you know imitate us thus uh, showing intelligence right so then this is the theological objection in which thinking is a function of man's immortal soul god has given an immortal soul to every man and woman but not any hence no animal i can think i am unable to accept this part of this but will attempt to reply in theological terms and yeah he is solving uh, many you know he's like solving all the objections that are in this that are that could be you know that that could possibly come against this paper i mean this paper is actually a very bold move to write this paper especially in the 1950s it might look like uh it might look pretty foolish at that time well uh he so that is the reason he had a lot like so many objections that could occur and he has solved them and uh, it's actually a very good paper that they had laid foundations to the current deep learning and AI revolution. And then, uh, so that is the thing. That is the paper. That is the life of Alan Turing. So and I, I just thought of, you know, just giving you a history lesson. This man. Uh, that's it, I think. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.